Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how to create an Grok tunnel and create your own JSON server, then perform CRUD operation to access and modify the data from anywhere. So let's get started. Let's create an expo app, expo in it, DB app. You can name it whatever you want. Okay, now app is created. Now create folder, name it JSON server and open this folder in terminal or command. Then run npm init, then enter details or just simply press enter to skip this. Now you can see package.json file is created. Open it. Now here you can see some data is added. Add a script section, you can add scripts to run the server. First we will add two packages. Just copy dependency section and paste in package.json file. You will get repo link from the description below. Now run npm install command to install these packages. You can see non module folder is added. Inside of the package.json file, here I am going to delete existing script. Now we are going to add two script to this script section. This db script for starting the JSON server, and this tunnel script is starting up the ngrok tunnel. JSON server runs on port 3000 by default. If you want to change it, so you have to add hyphen p5000 or any port you want. Also, you can change ngrok port. I just leave it 3000. Let's start the tunnel. It is online now and expire in 2 hours. Its reason is United States. These are forwarding URLs. Now start JSON server. So you can see when I run it first time, it generates the db.json file. You can see its home is localhost at port 3000 and these are resource endpoints. Yeah, congrats, you are successfully running JSON server. These are the resources, post, comment and profile which are automatically created. To access and modify resource, you can use any HTTP methods. Let's see what going on here. Ngrok tunnel connect your local JSON server to public internet. So you can connect to your server from anywhere and you can access and modify your local database. This address point to localhost 3000 on your local machine. So you can use this address from any device or any network and it is going to point at your JSON server. Now open the db.json file. This file is where our JSON server is going to eventually store all of its information. This is a JSON file which looks similar to the JavaScript object but just as a slightly special syntax. We are going to remove this comment and profile objects. Now add more objects at the post array. Now restart the server and see. Now you can see it has only one resource and it has three objects. You can add more endpoints like this which can be any array or any object. We have to make sure that we have to use double quotes around all the keys of these objects be added in. You can see at the browser user and block resource added as an endpoint. Now open this folder in VS Code. This is our JSON server and this is our expo app. Now open app.js file. Now we will create HTTP request to fetch this post and show them in our app. First we create a function called getPost. We will use fetch API. It is allow us to make network request. It is a javascript method so we don't have to import it. 
now put url here so go to the terminal and copy this forwarding address and then add resource name which you want to get which is route name in my case i have post route so i concatenated it with ngroup url then we have to convert this response to json format then we print this response at console to check is it work or not then add catch if any errors so just log it now we use use effect hook to call get post method when screen first time renders dependency array will be empty so use effect not re-renders the screen for any state changes go to the db app folder then run expo start select run on android device ok you can see when app loads first time it calls get post method and get all the posts it has three posts at this time now I'll show this post so at flat list first store the post resource Now we show only title, so write item.title. Ok, great, it works perfectly. Now if I add any new post, it reflect at here. Now just save it and it re-renders, yes. Now we get 4 titles here. Let's go ahead, now we add post from here, so create new method post we use same URL this time method is post add body we have to add json.stringify cause HTTP request accept only string add post key and its value Now add headers Now save this Yes, we did a mistake This must be a comma not a dot Let's save it Now add button and call this add post method on pressing this button. So first argument is author and second is title. Now here you can see our new post is added. Let's make UI better and add some styles. I just fast forwarding this 
because we are not focusing on UI right now. Now add delete button, we pass item.id Now let's create delete post method Nobody required for delete the post. We have to add post ID at the end of URL so that it identifies which post we want to delete. This must be a backtick, not a single quote. Now try to delete. Yes, it returns empty object. It means it works well. And post is deleted. So you can see id equal 4 post is deleted. Now delete last, yes it deletes. You can see at your localhost server it is also show same resource ok I made this UI more better and now we can add post dynamically and added edit button now create edit post functionality first when edit button pressed then show pop up pass post id title and author as argument create a state to store post id and then we store current post data like so Now save this. Now copy and paste method. Here add one more argument which is post id. Add condition add pop up submit button. If post id is already present then call edit button else call add post method method should be put because we want to edit the post and other this same is You can see add post method works well. Now update it. Now edit it. Okay, it works great.
now edit it okay it works now let's go ahead now whenever get method called we will show loader or activity indicator for that add async await add get post method now add new loading state set loading to true at beginning of the function and before the fetch calling and set loading to false at the end of the request Now add activity indicator, if loading is true then show activity indicator, otherwise show list. yes it works yes one bonus tip you can use ngrok for more than two hours and can get more api hits in one minute for that go to the ngrok website then sign up i already signed up then download ngrok desktop application then extract the zip file Copy or token, then open and grow directory into the terminal. And paste the or token. I already did it. Now go to the JSON server folder. Start the ngrok tunnel. Run npm run tunnel. You can see now it is not showing expiration time ok that's great you will get source code link from the description thanks for watching please like share and subscribe have a nice day